continue on today with Chapter 6, The Alternative to Projection. Any split in mind must involve a rejection of part of it, and this is the belief in separation. The wholeness of God, which is His peace, cannot be appreciated except by a whole mind that recognizes the wholeness of God's creation. By this recognition it knows its Creator. Exclusion and separation are synonymous, as are separation and dissociation. We have said before that the separation was and is dissociation, and that once it occurs projection becomes its main defense, or the device that keeps it going. The reason, however, may not be so obvious as you think. What you project, you disown, and therefore do not believe is yours. You are excluding yourself by the very judgment that you are different from the one on whom you project. Since you have also judged against what you project, you continue to attack it, because you continue to keep it separated. By doing this unconsciously, you try to keep the fact that you attacked yourself out of awareness, and thus imagine that you have made yourself safe. Yet projection will always hurt you. It reinforces your belief in your own split mind, and its only purpose is to keep the separation going. It is solely a device of the ego to make you feel different from your brothers, and separated from them. The ego justifies this on the grounds that it makes you seem better than they are, thus obscuring your equality with them still further. Projection and attack are inevitably related, because projection is always a means of justifying attack. Anger, without projection, is impossible. The ego uses projection only to destroy your perception of both yourself and your brothers. The process begins by excluding something that exists in you, but which you do not want, and leads directly to excluding you from your brothers. We have learned, however, that there is an alternative to projection. Every ability of the ego has a better use, because its abilities are directed by the mind, which has a better voice. The Holy Spirit extends and the ego projects. As their goals are opposed, so is the result. The Holy Spirit begins by perceiving you as perfect. Knowing this perfection is shared, he recognizes it in others, thus strengthening it in both. Instead of anger, this arouses love for both, because it establishes inclusion. Perceiving equality, the Holy Spirit perceives equal needs, this invites atonement automatically, because atonement is the one need in this world that is universal. To perceive yourself this way is the only way in which you can find happiness in the world. That is because it is the acknowledgement that you are not in this world, for the world is unhappy. How else can you find joy in a joyless place except by realizing that you are not there? You cannot be anywhere God did not put you, and God created you as part of Him. That is both where you are and what you are. It is completely unalterable. It is total inclusion. You cannot change it now or ever. It is forever true. It is not a belief but a fact. Anything that God created is as true as He is. Its truth lies only in its perfection, perfect inclusion in Him, who alone is perfect. To deny this is to deny yourself and Him, since it is impossible to accept one without the other. The perfect equality of the Holy Spirit's perception is the reflection of the perfect equality of God's knowing. The ego's perception has no counterpart in God, but the Holy Spirit remains the bridge between perception and knowledge. 
by enabling you to use perception in a way that reflects knowledge, you will ultimately remember it. The ego would prefer to believe that this memory is impossible, yet it is your perception the Holy Spirit guides. Your perception will end where it began. Everything meets in God, because everything was created by Him and in Him. God created His sons by extending His thought and retaining the extensions of His thought in His mind. All His thoughts are thus perfectly united within themselves and with each other. The Holy Spirit enables you to perceive this wholeness now. God created you to create. You cannot extend His kingdom until you know of its wholeness. Thoughts begin in the mind of the thinker from which they reach outward. This is as true of God's thinking as it is of yours. Because your mind is split, you can perceive as well as think. Yet perception cannot escape the basic laws of mind. You perceive from your mind and project your perceptions outward. Although perception of any kind is unreal, you made it, and the Holy Spirit can therefore use it well. He can inspire perception and lead it toward God. This convergence seems to be far in the future only because your mind is not in perfect alignment with the idea, and therefore does not want it now. The Holy Spirit uses time, but does not believe in it. Coming from God, He uses everything for good, but He still does not believe in what is not true. Since the Holy Spirit is in your mind, your mind can also believe only what is true. The Holy Spirit can speak only for this, because He speaks for God. He tells you to return your whole mind to God, because it has never left Him. If it has never left Him, you need only perceive it as it is to be returned. The full awareness of the Atonement, then, is the recognition that the separation never occurred. The ego cannot prevail against this, because it is an explicit statement that the ego never occurred. The ego can accept the idea that return is necessary because it can so easily make the idea seem difficult. If the Holy Spirit tells you that even return is unnecessary, because what never happened cannot be difficult. However, you can make the idea of return both necessary and difficult. Yet it is surely clear that the perfect need nothing and you cannot experience perfection as a difficult accomplishment, because that is what you are. This is the way in which you must perceive God's creations, bringing all of your perceptions into the one line the Holy Spirit sees. This line is the direct line of communication with God, and lets your mind converge with His. There is no conflict anywhere in this perception because it means that all perception is guided by the Holy Spirit, whose mind is fixed on God. Only the Holy Spirit can resolve conflict, because only the Holy Spirit is conflict-free. He perceives only what is true in your mind, and extends outward only to what is true in other minds. The difference between the the ego's projection and the Holy Spirit's extension is very simple. The ego projects to exclude, and therefore to deceive. The Holy Spirit extends by recognizing Himself in every mind, and thus perceives them as one. Nothing conflicts in this perception, because what the Holy Spirit perceives is all the same. Wherever He looks, He sees Himself. And because He is united, He offers the whole kingdom, always. This is the one message God gave to Him, and for which He must speak, because that is what He is. The peace of God lies in that message, and so the peace of God lies in you. The great peace of the kingdom shines in your mind forever, but it must shine outward to make you aware of it. The Holy Spirit was given you with perfect impartiality, and only by recognizing Him impartially can you recognize Him at all. The ego is legion, but the Holy Spirit is one. No darkness abides, 
anywhere in the kingdom, but your part is only to allow no darkness to abide in your own mind. This alignment with the light is unlimited, because it is in alignment with the light of the world. Each of us is the light of the world, and by joining our minds in this light, we proclaim the kingdom of God together and as one. And from the workbook, there is nothing my holiness cannot do. Your holiness reverses all the laws of the world. It is beyond every restriction of time, space, distance, and limits of any kind. Your holiness is totally unlimited in its power because it establishes you as a son of God at one with the mind of its creator. Through your holiness the power of God is made manifest. Through your holiness the power of God is made available. And there is nothing the power of God cannot do. Your holiness then can remove all pain, can end all sorrow, and can solve all problems. It can do so in connection with yourself and with anyone else. It is equal in its power to help anyone because it is equal in its power to save anyone. If you are holy, so is everything God created. You are holy because all things He created are holy. And all things He created are holy because you are. In today's exercises, we will apply the power of your holiness to all problems, difficulties, or suffering in any form that you happen to think of, in yourself or in someone else. We will make no distinctions because there are no distinctions. In the four longer practice periods, each preferably to last a full five minutes, repeat the idea for today, close your eyes, and then search your mind for any sense of loss or unhappiness of any kind as you see it. Try to make as little distinction as possible between a situation that is difficult for you and one that is difficult for someone else. Identify the situation specifically and also the name of the person concerned. Use this form in applying the idea for today. In this situation involving blank, in which I see myself, there is nothing that my holiness cannot do. In the situation involving blank, in which blank sees himself, there is nothing my holiness cannot do. From time to time you may want to vary this procedure and add some relevant thoughts of your own. You might like, for example, to include thoughts such as, There is nothing my holiness cannot do because the power of God lies in it. Introduce whatever variations appeal to you, but keep the exercises focused on the theme. There is nothing my holiness cannot do. The purpose of today's exercises is to begin to instill in you a sense that you have dominion over all things because of what you are. In the frequent shorter applications, apply the idea in its original form unless a specific problem concerning you or someone else arises or comes to mind. In that event, use the more specific form in applying the idea to it. There is nothing my holiness cannot do. So today we use holiness as the power in our mind, as our mind, 
to accomplish an all-inclusive perception as an opening to the vision of Christ, to true sight. In today's reading in the text, gave us an alternative to projection. The Holy Spirit extends, the ego projects. Today our holiness extends to show the impossibility of projection of any kind. brings an end to the attempt to hurt oneself by projecting. It brings an end to the attempt to get rid of something that is not wanted. We see now the foolishness of projection. We could not appear to project unless we wanted attack and anger. As we accept our holiness, the impossibility of attack and anger and projection becomes obvious. Because if we believe that we can get rid of something we do not want, we were attempting to exclude ourselves from our brothers to keep a gap between subject and object, between observer and observed. We are grateful for the extension of love, the extension of peace. We are grateful for the perception of equality. It is obvious atonement is the one need in this world that is universal. And this is the only way in which one can find happiness. The one way we can see that who we are is spirit. And spirit is not in this world. Spirit is in the mind of God. Spirit is Divine Mind. Thank you God for creating me, for creating my very identity as Spirit, forever true, forever a fact, forever perfect and forever love. With this love in my heart, I practice the lesson for today. There is nothing my holiness cannot do.